I was such a prick to girls until the age of 28, 29. I'm 33 now. I've been phenomenal for the last few years, but I was so mm -hmm. bad. Like just the worst, immature, juvenile, sort of all of the all of the fuckboy things. Like everything that you thought a club promoter would do, that is exactly how I would mm -hmm. behave. And I see the same in girls too. I don't think that this is purely for guys. Like girls up until the age of 25, 26 can be unbelievably immature and unbelievably petty and juvenile. Mm -hmm. And um, I wonder whether we need to almost change some of the cultural stereotypes around what people think is like an acceptable age to settle down because for some people yeah my business partner and his missus started going out at 20 got married at 26 now they've got three kids and two dogs and a wonderful house and all this stuff but they're a massive exception and for the most part people with relationships under 25 are just stumbling their way through a minefield of shit mm -hmm. like it's terrible most of the relationships end in catastrophe um and I think that if people just conceded that a little bit more, if we got out of the meet, meet the sweetheart at 18, get married, stay together for life stereotype that perhaps has been carried on from our parents' era, maybe we would be less nervous around when things start to go wrong. Maybe we'd actually be able to let go of things in a more healthy way. I don't know. That's an interesting perspective. Um, I want to say, I can't remember where I was listening to the statistics, but it was that like, Gen Z, the, the chances of Gen Z marriages um, ending in divorce was almost 70%, I want to say. And then millennials, I still think is right around 50, maybe a skosh higher, but it's a lot higher for the generation behind us. Do you, and I, I see this even just with regular relationships, like you said, it's not, it's not isolated to just marriage. Do you think that there's a reason why we're seeing this this shift because I would have assumed it would, would have been the opposite. So I always say like our parents' generation, it was right below 50% for divorce. And I think a lot of that was there wasn't that open communication, right? Like this was the the carved out definition of what a marriage was and you have to fit perfectly into it. You have to have the two and a half kids and the house and the mom stays home and the dad works and um, it was very rigid. So there wasn't a lot of flexibility to say, well, actually, this is what I need in a relationship. And this is what I need romantically to, you know, keep that aspect healthy. There wasn't a lot of that communication um, or curation for the relationship. And then I think I felt like our generation started having more of those conversations, like, I love you, you love me. But this, this definition of what a, a marriage is doesn't work for me and like what works for you what do you what kind of communication do you need what kind of romance do you need do you want to be in an open situation do you want to have you know whatever that is like we have so many more options than our parents did so it's like okay maybe we'll start to see a change um, in the statistics because now we're we're treating marriage as if two individuals are deciding to spend the rest of their lives together rather than this institutional definition. And you actually see the opposite happening. Um, so you have all of this liberation and I guess people are kind of running from, away from the traditional aspects of what a relationship or marriage are, but then at the same time, they're failing at a much higher rate. So I was wondering if you have any insight as to why we're seeing those numbers spike. I think it's just, it's so trite to say it now, right? But think about the transient transactional nature of sex, that the, all of the, you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want. The fluidity that we're seeing with gender expression and sexual identity is also being matched with not slut shaming, not, I don't know what the equivalent is for guys, fuckboy shaming. Like people can just do what they want. And this is what happens when you get yourself into a society that casts off a lot of tradition. We think that science and rationality and this utilitarian approach to the world, if we can land a spaceship on the moon, why can't we sleep with as many people as we want? And I think that the problem that we've encountered is that one, those two things don't necessarily map on top of each other. Casting off religion is the explanation for how the earth came to be and how humans evolved and why the dinosaurs aren't here anymore and stuff like that. That may have been smart. But casting off some of the traditions to do with having social cohesion between you and your local geographical area uh, around having weekly rituals 
that allow you to bond with the people that you know and to actually reinforce the family group, mm -hmm. uh, to have support structures that help families to stay together. All of these sorts of things. These are the secular sides of religion and tradition that have also been thrown out. So the baby, the bathwater and the bath have all gone out together. And think about now, like if it's one Tinder swipe away from your next relationship, cheating's become easier. The ability to pick up and move has, has become easier. People are, as Vance Crow, my buddy uh, who has been on his show says, people are anywhere people, not somewhere people. And an anywhere person doesn't care about where they are. They're not invested in the local community. They don't actually have roots set down. They're just, and I'm all for the digital nomad style of life. Like I, I do it as well, but it doesn't lend itself massively towards being committed to a long-term relationship and settling mm -hmm. down roots. There's this quote that says, tradition is a set of solutions for which we have forgotten the problems. And when you think about that, you're like, oh, okay. A lot of the things that we did were there to fix problems that we didn't realize we had. And now that we've got rid of those things, the problems have come back. And finding cohesion in the family unit is one of them. I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. You think that there was a little bit of our parents' generation in ours and far less of our parents' generation in the one that's coming on. If you thought that our generation, the millennials, were liberal with sex and with the way that they saw men and women's roles within the family and how you can, it doesn't matter, you can remarry at any age. That's only increasing as you get on in an always on connected world. Like you can TikTok, Tinder swipe your way from half baked relationship to one night stand until, you know, until your seventies, like you can just keep on doing mm -hmm. that. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. I have, I have such a hard time with that because Obviously, my opinion is going to be a little bit jaded given um, like just who I am and my experiences. But like, so obviously I'm not in a typical marriage, right? That's given my my history with porn like that. Most people would not be OK with that situation. Um, a lot of advice is or like the our parents advice would never to be to sleep with someone on the first date. Like that's almost guarantees that that relationship never blossoms into anything substantial. Well, shockingly to probably a lot of people, I had never had a, for a one night stand, never had one. Um, I broke up with a very long-term boyfriend and I was kind of hitting this rebellious streak. I was like, I'm gonna find out you know, who I am. I'm gonna just live it up. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna have my first one night stand. Like that was my goal for that summer. Um, and then I meet my now husband and I was like, okay, it's going to be that guy. <laughs> we hook up. Um, and I was so proud of myself. Because <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was unattached. I didn't ask for his number. I was so proud of myself because for me, it was a sense of independence after being in a relationship for far too long that I should have left earlier. Um, and then I ended up marrying the guy. So it's funny because that advice is, you know, it'll never turn into something, but also, I'm terrible at one night stands because that was my only one I've ever had. And again, we're married with a baby now, <laughs> so I didn't do it so great. But I don't think I don't think that you necessarily have to be super rigid when it comes to sexuality in order to say that you're going to get a traditional family if that's what you want or if it's going to turn into marriage or whatever. Um, I de definitely think there needs to be some kind of parameters around a relationship. Even the loosest relationships still have boundaries. <laughs> Think about what you've just said there, though, even though you were able to do the one night stand thing, the underlying assumptions, the subtext that you were bringing into it was that of a natural romantic. Mm. You were still going into that situation and almost having to create a forcing function to get you to th like put blinders on. So you didn't look at the relationship stuff over here. It's like, right, one night stand, like, don't, don't, don't bother with this stuff. Like that doesn't matter anymore. And, um, yeah, I think that all that's happened is you've just ended up manifesting your way of seeing relationships which is something that you invest in. Mm -hmm.